This is the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic. This week, we're breaking down the latest details on Onslaught, the new update coming in the fall that we got in this past week from the live stream, from subsequent blog and forum posts, but not yet really from the AMA. I think we're going to cover that and and the things that are going on right now in the forums next week. Uh, but we're going to go through all of that previous stuff, which is a ton of stuff this week. So hopefully this won't be a two hour podcast, but we'll see what we can do. This broadcast astromech is EPC 295. And playing alongside me is Seema. Hi Seema, how's it going? Hey Max, it's going really well. Um, for Marcus's sake, so he can go to sleep, I'll say right off the top that it's Thursday night we're recording, so MFN was two days ago. And then what we did during MFN, while you were, because you were on vacation, um, we had a Dantooine night, which leads me into some other stuff that I did this week, which was more Dantooine. I also did my Osis stuff. Um, I did Conquest stuff, and I um, spent some time leveling on one of my uh, Sages or Sorks. I don't know which. Um, I have a bunch of characters still that are just in like the 60s or the high 60s, so I just, every time there's a Conquest with, with, um, heroics or rampages that i haven't finished then i i pull them out for leveling even though we're getting a leveling event coming soon right um which i am definitely looking forward to and uh yeah that is oh yeah queen on both sides on our in our ops team we did we we visited um ev afterwards but we didn't give ourselves enough time so we didn't finish it so like Mac, Mac says at least we have a lockout now for later in the week if anybody wants it um, so yeah that's what I've been doing in SOTOR this week I know your week has been pretty radically different Max yeah a little bit different this week so I was out on vacation with the fam um, it was my my kids are just the coolest people in the world so we were we were all just just me and my three older kids um, going and hanging out on some beaches and stuff. That was real cool. I did play on the plane. <laughs> so I, I logged in <laughs> on the plane. Uh, I had to... So the day before we left was the live stream. I I had a work event that night, but I did watch like two-thirds of the live stream, and then I watched the rest of the live stream today. But I did follow up a little bit and saw a little bit what was going on in the forums, saw a little bit of what was going on in the AMA, a bunch of that this week. So with that, and then prep today, the the plane actually got in this, this morning um, for the, the nine-hour flight that it was. Uh, I have not played too much of Dantooine yet, so I'm still going off of what I know on the PTS, and we'll spend this week and this weekend doing plenty of stuff because I'd like to collect enough of the rep tokens so I can carry those on after the week is after the, these two weeks of the initial event are done to maybe get all of the rep. But remember, you, you have a cap on what you can turn in each week. You can collect the extra rep tokens and turn them in in future weeks when the event's not going on. But you have better collect them all now because you won't be able to get them. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's what I've been doing. Um, had, a, had a blast with the kids and now am back and I'm back online, if you know what I mean. And I do not. Max is back. Max is back. Now an Imperial News Network report. So going back to, to two days after we did our last podcast, uh, which was a little over a week ago, they did that live stream. And boy, they really they really blew it out. It was really yeah. cool, um, the fact that they did that as far as they went and as, as open as they're being with the design of what's going into Onslaught. I really liked the live stream. They seemed, I don't know, whoever they're... They, they, they locked their PR person in a room. <laughs> <laughs> they seemed embiggened. Yes, em embiggened and emboldened and just off the leash, if you know what I mean. Why do I keep saying that? Why do I say, keep saying if you know what I mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've got to stop saying that. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't mean what you think it means when you say, it, it is you know not, what I mean. <laughs> and, and not a double entendre. It's not even a single entendre. Uh, I just keep saying it for whatever reason. So it was really good. Got to see Keith, got to see 
uh, Charles will go through all of that in detail. That's what we're going to spend the bulk of the the second half of the podcast on. So we'll 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 leave off there. But yeah, I was I, re- I was really pleased. Um, so a follow up to the stream, they um, Eric Wynn opened up feedback threads for the amplifiers for the um, bonus the set bonus set bonuses and tactical effects for Galactic Ren- Renown, which is the rebranding of Galactic Command. Um, for how you acquire gear and for PvP. So those threads are all in place. So once you read through all the um, stream info and the AMA info, and you have feedback for them on how they're thinking about doing things, this is where you would go. These are good, good discussions so far. Relatively constructive, people giving, uh, you know, interesting comments and it's not <laughs> it's not a dumpster fire <laughs> as as <laughs> could potentially be yeah. from time to time there's there's criticism in there but there, it's I, some of the criticism is good and valid and, yeah, and good questions are being raised criticism. and i i'm pleased with the discussion that's going on uh, as you look through those so there's there's those five that Sima mentioned the set bonus tactical item effect thread the reason that's combined is because they haven't decided completely which things are going on which. So the kinds of things they're thinking about for tacticals versus the kinds of things they're thinking about for set bonuses. If you have ideas between either of those, that's the thread to discuss them. Also, the older threads with the ideas for tacticals and set bonuses, those are still open and they're still looking for feedback associated with that. There's one other, do I, do I, do we mention in the news, there was one other nice thread that was started, which sort of falls into this category. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll mention it's a crafting discussion, but I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, also up in the news. So after they opened those up, they did, uh, clarify in the dev, dev tracker that galactic command and the achievements associated with it are going away in the onslaught timeframe. They'll be moved to feats of strength and the points associated with them will be zeroed out. So there's two places in your legacy where you're going to want to look for those and maybe do some work if you want. One is under achievements, galactic command itself, dark versus light. There's deleting all the dark side, light side bosses, which I don't know why I'm zero on all of those. I Oh, no, I'm not zero on all of them. I've killed a couple of them. So maybe... We- right, you're... you're- yeah, it's zero percent because you don't get any points for it until you've done all of one section. Yeah, so that's three things there. So Maybe we should schedule some guild events to go go kill some of those. That would be cool. It just it's just hard to find them up. Right, right. They're hard to find them up, and they're a serious fight. So you can't just go with three people on an on a a a weekend. Um, and then the other place you're gonna want want to look for it is under uh. Uh, not player versus player. Um, under your character's d- progression. No, it was. Uh, wasn't it location? Events. How we found this? Yeah, we before. did. Why is it s- space fallen empire? It's people character of people. Gets your people the character. Okay, it's legacy and then oh, under legacy, legacy it's advancement. That's right. That's yeah. your, your your legacy as in the legacy of all your characters. Yeah. So under legacy advancement there's the achievements for doing getting to 300 on each of the characters, which I am way behind on for some reason. I think I was under the impression that you only had to do it on one of each of the mirrored classes, which I think is true for part of the it buff. for the buff. But I'm right. way behind. But then for the achievement, you need you need all of them. Yeah, just like in chat, uh, people are asking why why would they delete any achievements ever? They're not deleting them. They're just moving them to a dead folder. Right. What <laughs> feats of strength? And the reason is is because now it's going to be structured differently. And so you you won't be able to get these. Get, yeah. Right. You can't get co- Galactic Command achievements anymore. So to have them hanging out there at partial completion when you can't get them anymore isn't good either. Right. That's that's I think that's their main thing. Yeah. The goal the goal is to archive them, not delete them. And Correct. they they did say in the thread they'd messed up on that before. The the idea is to do a they proper sure archiving. And zeroing out the points is part of that archiving, I guess. Yes. 
Well, you know what? Since the Galactic Command achievements are in two different places and the DVL bosses are all by themselves, maybe they will keep those and just, it's just, maybe it's just a confusion that it's also called Command Galactic Command. We should ask that question. We should ask that question. We're going to try to gather up additional questions this week. I was going to try to do that last week. I still have some ideas for some questions and clarification I'd like to get out of them. Um, may do that this week. If you've got things like this, uh, send them in and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, so that's it. Galactic Command achievements. What else happened this week? Any, anything happened in the game? Um, yes. Yes. Dantooine happened. It sure did. So 5.10.3, which was supposed to come on June the 4th, came on June the 4th. And we got patch notes for it. Um, it included the planet of Dantooine. And the event that's running there, which is the pirate incursion, is going to run this week and next week. It's a one week of twice as a sort of celebratory, hello, now you have a new event event. Um, and then next week is also going to coincide with the double XP. Um, they also in the patch are, have new planetary transitions. So cutscenes when you're flying to planets, um, the, the nightlife event is coming in July and there were fixes, which they were very sly about this. My favorite fix in a, quite a while was a fix to, um, putting things in your legacy bank without having to put them in and then combine them. It's like when that first happened, I thought, I thought I, I thought I only thought I clicked and I didn't actually click <laughs> or something. Right. And I had to try it like six right. times before I realized, Oh my gosh, look what they did. And you, you mentioned it and you were like, Oh, this is, this is so you think it's so small, but it's so nice. So nice of a little, a little fix. Yes. And it is. Yes. Oh, I, I mean, I said it in a, in a joking way in Discord. I said, what am I going to do with all this free time now that I only have to click once? <laughs> but I, I, it's, I really like it. And I, now I'm waiting for when we can do the same, like when we're mailing gifts. Because like an idiot, I mail gifts all the time. Because when I get them, I don't want to have to decide what to do with them. So I just send them all to one character. Yeah. And then when I, then when I decide I have a... A, a companion that I want to raise the influence of, I I go to that companion and gather all the gifts and mail them back. And then I have to click twice on them each time that time. Right. I should just sell them all. Yeah. Well, but that's effort too. So. Yeah. But then once you double, once you do all your double clicking for that, then you just get credits. You don't have to like double click again to you. Know. Anyway. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, new content this week and i've been playing in dantooine mostly on the pub almost exclusively on the pub side because that's where i started and that's where i finished um but because i realized that tonight when we were logging in i was running around on my imp character which is what we did on the test server i'm like oh yeah these are all different it's like upside down and backwards amazing yeah i'm, I'm really glad they, they they did some of those side fixes too and just slipped them in uh, also in the dev tracker, I did get this popping up in my, it sort of slightly popped up here. I think it was, I didn't get a, a notification on my screen at all, but there is a little bit of tiny bit of story continuation from Jedi under siege and from Osis. If you get to Dantooine, this hearts and minds gets you a little opportunity to continue, um, the, the story there a little bit. It's not related to the yeah, actual story of the event on Dantooine specifically, I don't think. Yes. That's no, it isn't it. related to Dantooine okay. at all. I haven't done it yet. Um, so and sorry. the only intro, I mean, the intro to Dan Dantooine is on the fleet from the news terminal, a la the Gree event and the Rackle event. You know how there's a news terminal and you go click on it and they tell you news. Like, then the news guy says there's pirates on Dantooine. Oh, really? And you go, okay, I'm going to go fix it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's... The I expected yeah. they would have done that, but I didn't go to the fleet uh, to to look for that. I just was hanging out in my strongholds in my ship. That that makes sense. Right. They should they should do that. Good. Uh, what else? Oh, that yeah. means. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. So, and you know the train of communication is firmly rolling. So another place where they covered the changes to how gearing is going to work in Sixado. Um, Dan wrote a Spoils of War article 
now posted up on SWOTOR.com. So that goes into what they talked about in the live stream, but in a more narrative textual way. So that's an interesting read. And a nice article. Yeah, and a nice article. So they did they did the stream. They did a long post about the stream, which was really good. They did this article, and then they did forum posts, which they're responding to, and then they did the the um which which we'll talk about in just a second. But they did the AMA. They did a, they just like put a lot of information out in a lot of different yeah. formats and we're really good about it this time. So I'm I'm happy with that. They did this they did this thing for Spoils of War, and then they did the one for, as, as we mentioned before, the one for Dan Tween. I was looking at the one for, for Dan Tween. Where Where is that one? There was a cool looking armor set. Is it under news? Community, HoloNet, news, Spoils of War, San Diego, Cartel Market, Dan Tween Incursion. So look at this, look at this, uh, I like this, person here she looks like some sort of it almost looks like mark armor it could be could be smuggler agent kind of armor um i don't know what kind of eye mask she's got going on there and she's got the short white hair like gina davis in long kiss goodnight she, I, I want this, <laughs> yes. this character right here is i want to know i want to meet her she's that that's that's whatever made that character that looks pretty cool and she's her method of combat is fussy cuffs yeah she's and she's got she's got a good stance there good good wide open balance stance yeah she's <laughs> yeah she's got to learn her story so great stuff uh, good job D bioware team putting all of that kind of content together i really appreciate it uh also up as i mentioned in addition to those official feedback po posts those five feedback posts on various parts of what they've described for onslaught before a side post start started up that was asking questions about crafting and there are a couple so far, a couple responses back from Eric that clarify a couple bits of crafting. Something about, some things about where the materials will come from, uh, some things about um, augments. Yes, augment, there will be a new tier of augments that are gonna come in, uh, in the Onslaught timeframe. Uh, so, uh, and and they still matter and you know so check that out and respond back in there and we I, I think that's a good idea for us a, a six post although although they're going to get much deeper into into crafting I think in the future with a blog post of its own um, before long as well. Now I missed out on this then, next bit, but the there were, I did see screenshots of login queues. Was that the deal? Yes, yes, there were. Yeah, so there was a lag. Um, issue when the content patch first dropped and they right away almost right away narrowed it to down to the change where they were giving conquest points for xp so they had some kind of something squirrely in that piece of code so they backed that out but yeah we did have login queues for a short time it was it was yeah it was funny because that's not something that we're used to yeah yeah so I, it's weird that they also had to back out the, the conquest change. They do plan on putting that back in. I would have liked to, to see it in just to play with it and get, get some experience on how that's going to impact conquest and the feel of conquest in general. Um, but yeah, so it's, yeah. it's backed out at this point. What did our... I mean, that was their, that's why they wanted to do it, right? Is they wanted people to yeah get a chance to experience it. But uh, yeah, they had to, and they, I mean... It, it was only broken for a short time, really. I mean, by that night, by that evening, it was fixed. So it was very quick. The, well, the servers are fixed, but that change is still backed out, and it won't be in until a future update, Okay, by fixing, I yeah. mean the lag the lag issue was fixed because they backed it out. They didn't say, yeah. we're going to back it out in the next content patch. Although, that that is a good point. That at This one, at least, they were able to back it out and undo, undo the change, which they're not always able to do, it seems. <laughs> Uh, with with yes. various things. So uh, also this week, which we're not going to get into too, in too much detail, although I, I did read through it all just because there's too much to talk about tonight in general. Uh, they did the full AMA uh, and they followed up uh, more questions. Then they're continuing to do that in a number of forums, both in the, in the forum forums, uh, as well as a couple of the places that they're answering questions. So as that develops, probably over the course of the next week, um, we'll probably hit it hard next week and get into 
all of the the clarifications and questions and details on top of just what they did in in the live stream and what we've seen so far see how those and by all the details we really mean the ones that are interesting to us yes. <laughs> i mean just to clarify <laughs> but nothing else matters if it's not interesting to me <laughs> that's right um there's also a a, a thread in there about an achievement called the Dantuinian Culinary Achievement, and a few some discussion about whether it can even be achieved yet. Um, Eric made a post suggesting that that pe many people read to mean that it can't. You can only complete the achievement in the off weeks. In other words, on Dantuin when the event's not there. But I don't know if that's the case because many people were reporting that they could find the various things that you needed to achieve it. It's just very very long. Um, spawn times and rarity hmm. uh, maybe it's because a lot of people are clicking it I don't know but um, yes it's it's an achievement and it's culinary interesting I mean there's food involved but I don't think it's the, I don't think it's a good kind of food I think it's food you you mean an irritable bloat gourd is not good kind of food <laughs> <laughs> I think you I think you may be right <laughs> charred cath shank that, I don't know. That could <laughs> actually be good. But, that might be good, yeah. But irritable bloat gourd. <laughs> that is an awesome name. That or sounds terrible. Ingredient. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm. I got to dig into those achievements more because I don't remember that on the PTS. I did get a bunch of achievements on the on the PTS. Oh, there's that. Oh, how many credits is the? Is the fifteen million? Fifteen million. Don't do it. Don't do it, Max, because there's another one for doing it 10 times. <laughs> 150 million credits. <laughs> right. So you won't, it won't be satisfying to do the one for 15 million. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, well, why, what, yeah, I'm, I, I don't even have to have the, the easy achievements. I don't know why I'm like setting my sights on that. Why don't I, <laughs> why don't I wait and like get the, you know, level, you know, level your alt to, to, CXP 300, <laughs> which I should have done like <laughs> years ago. All right, you're right, Seema. I will, I will. Although that one's really easy, I could just dump 150 million credits. And... <laughs> anyway, in community news, uh, there is a community event coming up that they did post about in a couple places. News article, you can check the details there on the website. The Community Cantina event is coming to San Diego, San Diego, San Diego. I said that wrong. I said that weird. <laughs> Not San Diego. <laughs> it's San Diego. San Diego is a cool town. Coronado Island. I'm a, I'm a little fan of there. And then the Navy, naval bases out there. I was staying, in, staying at a hotel that was looking across the little Bay Area to Coronado Island. And this was probably about 10 years ago in a work thing. And I looked out the window, and the big aircraft carrier, you know, live working aircraft carrier, comes floating and floating through the bay with a bunch of soldiers, soldiers, naval personnel lined up on the decks. It was really cool. Uh, but San Diego is a, a cool town, and it's a cool place to have a cantina event. We've said this before many times. Oh, it's San Diego Comic Con. Oh, that could end, actually end up being being big. Um, so it's, it's at the Westin San Diego Gas Lamp district that's sort of the little downtownish area there um could be cool those are often cool so star wars celebration was a giant one um if you can get to even a little bit smaller one although this being at san diego comic-con might actually be giant also um uh yeah could could be interesting uh the chat room is also asking if when i was stationed in san, san diego when i was a, a a, a crewman uh sorry that information is classified i uh, you you can't <laughs> handle the truth um so there's that <laughs> i'm glad they're having a, a a cantina that's that's cool and san diego like you say it's a cool town and i know we have a lot of west coast people so hopefully everyone can make it that wants to it also shows also shout out to the continuing to invest in those things and that's really cool on its own yes yeah. yes i i agree um, chat room, shout out to you guys. Thank you for being here, especially this week and next week where we have so much information sort of streaming at us. You, you, as always, you help us, you help keep us honest, which we appreciate. And 
uh, we like having you here every week, so keep on coming. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, thank you. Keep calm and swotor on, or whatever the, <laughs> the appropriate yeah, I like that. theme <laughs> is. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, and with that, we have some information, a, a, a veritable onslaught of information, and... Many Bothans die to bring us this information. Keith, kill some more Bothans. We want some more inf information. <laughs> Keep killing yeah. Bothans. I'll tell you when to stop. Uh, yeah, so extensive... Oh, in fact, I have... I have some pictures of this of the stream. Let me let me bring those up. I almost almost forgot about those. Uh, Spoils of War live stream. Plenty of um, plenty of stuff. No, wrong. Wrong wrong place for the slideshow. Put it on here. There we go. Spoils of War live stream. Yeah, this was good. This was a good, good, good live stream. Um, so it started out, you know, they, they, they did their usual, yeah, here's what we're going to tell you about. Um, and it started out with Charles and, and Eric. And then Keith was able to jump in and poke his head in for a bit. Um, made some jokes about how old he is. But he's no older than half of us playing the game. So <laughs> stop <laughs> making jokes about being old, Keith. Because we are not. <laughs> we don't appreciate it. They they did this little communication and feedback breakdown. That was sort of one of the things they kicked it off with. I thought that was that was fine. Uh, I just hope they keep up with it. So ton that you know it's hard when they do so much. I hope they can. I almost want them to to, to spread it out and just keep some things in their back pocket because we get like so a ton right now. But I hope it doesn't get really quiet by. By this particular um, part of the live stream, people said that in the Anthem live stream, they had a very similar section. So this might be Bioware wide, which would be and like a like a standard that they're trying to set and support, which would be good. Interesting. Sort of a, a, a directive, a, a plan. Hey, here's how we should do communication, guys. What do you all think? Yeah, let's let's do it that way across all our games. A little better transparent. And, and maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe provide a little support for it too. Yeah. Like maybe that's where Dan, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. So we're in the gathering feedback phase right now. Participate in those threads, ask questions. Um, they'll be getting back to us with changes and results. Um, set your expectations because your particular feedback may not be one of the changes. There's a lot, obviously there's a, like a, probably like a million factors and there's going to be conflicting requests for changes coming in. And there's going to be half the people, you know, you could be able to, you can, you can please some of the people all the time and all the people some of the time, but you can never please all of the people all of the time. So you may be one of those people they can't please with some of their changes. Just sort of, I'm just putting that out there. Set your expectations uh and then and then we'll see what they uh, uh do on the pts which I mean, should be starting soon that is the tricky part right yeah. for any business that solicits feedback is taking the feedback that's helpful and helps your product be a better product and weeding weeding out which of the feedback that is yeah so that and it's it's a tough job and you would yeah. have to trust them to, to do their job. Um, it's, a, it's a good baseline that they've started from. So hopefully we, we will be able to tweak it as we go. Um, we'll see how it goes. They also did this, this little bit of their philosophy, which I thought was interesting. So, uh, and Keith has sort of talked about this in the on, onslaught announcement at Star Wars Celebration. They did want to correct a couple things and get into this theme of of let's go legacy uh they wanted to push sort of push galactic command to the side a little bit which they definitely have uh, although it'll still still be there and they talk about how that is and the idea of actual gear dropping from enemies and that showed up in the ama is it is it going to be tokens dropping from from bosses that you turn in somewhere and no the idea is actual gear items drop and and still embracing this, and I feel like they embraced this in, in ways before through Galactic Command. But the idea of play, you play your way. But they double down on that here too. 
Um, and then we'll talk about RNG protection. I'm interested in your thoughts on RNG protection, Seema, because you've seen that in other places as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's get into some of the details. So first up, set bonus and tacticals. We've talked about this a little bit. I, I like this. They did say, so they, they said on the stream specifically, they haven't yet decided what kinds of things are going into tacticals and what kinds of things are going to, into set bonuses. So the the brainstorm of ideas is still sort of across both of, both of these. Uh, I have my opinion. And my opinion is make make the set bonuses the, the, the boring stuff, the sort of the class defining stuff you know, makes makes my rail shot 10%, you know, harder, stronger or whatever. Right. Makes me able to move when I do X, Y, Z. And they, they can build on each other, you know, two piece, four piece, six piece set bonus. That kind of makes sense. The tactical items, I feel like they should be not any of that. Don't make it, you know, your, your lightning storm does 3% additional damage. And then I'm going to be like, eh, all right, great. Got a tactical, just slot whatever <laughs> tactical. I want it to be, you know, yeah, it makes you explode. And in your final death blow, your exploding corpse does, you know, 90% damage to every enemy around you. What if, what if, <laughs> yeah, what if you like could. That would be awesome. You're, 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 you know, you're wiping on a boss, you're wiping at 3%. Everybody switches over to a tactical that when they die and their corpse explodes, it does like a massive amount of damage. And, the boss like killing wiping your raid group raid group kills the last three percent of its health and that's how you complete the fight yes <laughs> that'd be great creative I use like of, it. but that's what i want i want i want it to my warp guts reality. Are my aoe yeah i want tactical items to warp reality in my view do you agree with that Seema, or do you do you do you want it a different way you like that well no i agree with it and i also want tacticals to like give me cool things that i miss when I'm not playing other classes, like, um, I mean, what I've said this before, one of my, one of the tactics I'd like to see for my commando and my Merc is that, um, a tactical that makes your rocket out go forwards instead of backwards. So it'd be sort of like a charge instead of, or a force speed instead of a escape. Yeah. Um, or something that allows you to have a stealth shield generator or, lets you do a, um, a grapple, a friendly grapple or an enemy grapple, you know, just fun, fun things like that. Yeah, I, I agree. But if it's going to be a fun thing like that, I mean, like the rocket in, I think that could be really, you know, interesting and useful, but then, then I want it to be really dramatic and I want it to, so, I mean, like, like Redna and in the, in the like room. flames come from you in the Mac. Yeah. Like, Hey Redna. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's, it's rocket out malfunction and your, your jet pack, <laughs> yeah. your, your jet pack ex explodes and you rocket forward on a, <laughs> dramatically <laughs> like, you know, like ragdoll effects and your, your, your body just rockets forward. You're doing like the no bones thing while, while you're flying through the air. So Redna, Redna named yeah. our, our explode on death as, as suicide devastation. I, there, we, I want perfect name. I want really dramatic names like that too. Um, my other one, which I keep saying, and I got to write it down somewhere for these guys, was the Force Ghost. I want one of the classes, and maybe this is like good for an Inquisitor, um, that idea of, of stealth, but it like you turn into a Force Ghost, and you get maybe, you know, maybe that turns you into stealth, or it makes you untargetable, or you know, some really cool Force Ghost ability. I think that would be an, an interesting thing. Um, yeah. So, in that thread where they're asking for feedback. Um, explain what I just said and vote for my ideas <laughs> yeah. and provide whatever other feedback you might have as well, as long as it doesn't conflict with my ideas in that thread. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. I'm going to need you to go post my idea on Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in on Saturday and make sure you put a TPS cover sheet on those ideas. <laughs> you... Did you get the memo? Okay. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> They then they went through so they explained that then they went through their their focus right now on Sork, uh, Sork Inquisitor Assassin, and this is what's going to end up as as the PTS. So I I think they're sort of workshopping these out as the first set that they're actually going to even put on the PTS to try to try out. Um, they they wanted to walk through some of these class defining effects. 
So Inquisitor, it was whirlwind is is reduced and killing an enemy before world whirlwind resets res, resets the cooldown of whirlwind that is kind of interesting uh the one that everybody is sort of going crazy over there is the the last one which is force shroud also applies to potentially to any ar ally you are guarding so imagine in pvp if i'm i'm going ass tank and I'm using my guard, which y'all should be if you're PvPing on a on a tank-ish spec like that. And you force shroud, and whoever you're guarding also gets force shrouded. That I mean, that would be a guard ability. That would that you to sort of like yank them out of out of combat. Um, that would that would be really cool. Um, so they, they talked about it there, and then they also talked about it for the Sork Discipline, uh, Lightning Madness. See, so this one was, this one is okay, because uh, so this one I thought was, was met until they also said spreads for slow effects. So Madness, Death Field does more damage, meh, to, but also spreads for slow effects. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. And very PvP related, because of course four slows aren't going to work on Garge. Um, but uh, right. but yeah, it makes it makes it interesting. So they they laid out a healing one. Uh, Sima, did that interest you um, at all? Corruption revivification revivification heals more for each ally at effect. So if if you can if you can herd your cats into a pile. <laughs> They'll right. all get more healing. Uh, so it would not only be defining for you and your rotation and when and when and where you would use it, but your group would potentially have to you know about it and take advantage of it. What do, what do you think of that? I think that it's more fun to have effects that you can control yourself, but I think it's a, it's a, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it'd be a lot of fun in a team that was pretty focused and did things like that, but that's And it is really it is still a little on. bit it's kind of in that category of your your heal does heals more, which is a little bit meh. I yeah, I th I think in mass res, you want a mass res? It would have to be an out. I do want a mass res, thank you very much. That would be awesome. So there you go. What about a tactical that gives you a mass res? That could be interesting. I mean, a mass res not only that. It's never happened. One of the cool else. things about mass res is you don't have to run around targeting, finding, and targeting people to res them, which, you know, it you can just push the button while everybody's looting and everybody gets resed. <laughs> so they do have this in in other games, and uh, <laughs> uh, you res at where the healer is. And we did have a situation in our guild in the WoW guild where somebody jumped off a cliff and did a mass res for his, his, house, his <laughs> raid team and took 24 people with them and <laughs> recorded it on Twitch. <laughs> now I like it even better. <laughs> Instacast mass res. That, that would be hilarious. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm glad that they're workshopping it out, throwing out some ideas on there. Uh, give them the feedback in the thread and more likely than not, especially this ones that they're talking about here for um, Sork and for uh, Inquisitor, we may end up seeing those in the next couple of weeks on the PTS first. And we'll talk about that in a second too. And then they talked about amplifiers, right? So they broke down amps, amplifiers. Uh, uh, I'm so, so on amplifiers. I don't, I don't get why we need amplifiers and why it's not just a you know an element of an augment or just part of what's on the mod or the armoring or the enhancement for one and it just seems like to me it just seems like a little bit of an extra thing on the shell which is a weird place to to have it locked to that you're gonna have to like fiddle with that i uh, is not something i've I, I don't know. I I want to worry about my set bonus and my my tactical and like this amplifier was supposed to be really minimal. It's just going to be like a a thing. What what's your impression of amplifier so far? I have to say I don't quite understand it either. However, 
I do think it'd be, it oh, would be fun to um, have better, th I mean, this is also where, where they put things like better harvesting results or maybe faster harvesting results. And if you put this on all, all your gear, I mean, you could make a farming set, which I think is kind of the goal here where it's, it's like the hobby side of gearing. And you can do this independent of what you might need that's best for your team, for instance. You, it's, just, it's just a personal thing. And I also think, because they put stuff on here like armor, armor penetration, increasing yeah. your, the damage your dots do. The other thing that I thought of when I saw this was it's going to be on top of, I think it's going to be on top of bolster. So like if you're out and about in the world right now, your gear, whatever your gear is, doesn't really matter. Right. But if you have a, these little effects, maybe that means you could kill mobs just a tiny bit faster, which would be kind of cool. Right. But the corollary to that is, I, I think you're right, and, the, and Zen in the chat room is mentioning, and they did sort of clarify that a little bit. Yes, this gear, gear eye level uh, doesn't matter at all in PvP because everything gets bolstered to the to, to max level, um, to basically to my level uh, is what they're saying. Uh <laughs> Just so you know. Right. Uh, but these things, amplifiers, um, tacticals, set bonus abilities, that kind of stuff does matter and, and will be different. So that's where you differ differentiate yourself. However, okay, because these amplifiers are going to be showing up all over the place and you're going to be able to re-roll them all over the place, I have the opportunity to, to think that they're going to be potentially really unbalancing too. Like in PvP, right. PvP, you know, you put a little bit of thing, and and a little a little bit of this showed up in the in the, I think in one of the forum posts where they're discussing them so far, like armor penetration. So armor penetration seems like a, a minor thing, and they're talking about amplifiers as being, you don't have to worry about them too much. They're just like this little minor thing if you want to do some min maxing, and that's not the way this is going to work at all. And it, it, you're going to end up with these situations where, you know, you're going to have people find figuring out. If I can stack armor pen on all of my sh pieces and now I have like this massive armor pen on my, you know, whatever arsenal merc because it's got the rail shot, I'm going to be like one shotting people and it's going to break PVP. Because there's the potential for so much of this is like being like extra fiddly bits. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for weird things that you're not going to be able to discover even in testing that are going to just end up in the game and are going to break things. Yeah, I think the potential for breaking things is in all of this, for sure. I also think with something and, like... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> a lot of thoughts on this. Well, like somebody in the forum said, I don't think you understand how close September actually is. And <laughs> there may be something in that. Right. I mean, he was saying that to Bioware. Right. Oh, yeah, you know, I saw that as well, and I agree. But, the, uh, so... And we'll get to that with how they're handling the, the, the PTS in a second. But they were like, you better put all of this stuff on the PTS real quick. Because, yeah. I also think they use the word balance um, in different ways. Like when they say not including regular PVE balance targets, a lot of people have read that to mean that they're not going to pay any attention to balance. Which is not the and case. And they are. Right. And they are. Right. But this is a lot to balance between step bonuses and tacticals and the new gear levels and the now all of these amplifiers as well. You, it's every every new variable you add is sort of an exponential impact on tests and errors. Right. Right. The other thing with amplifiers is I feel like this is gonna end up being a thing where somebody's gonna put together a spreadsheet. I feel like with tacticals, I'm gonna be interested in trying some things out. I feel like with amplifiers, somebody's going to end up with a spreadsheet. I'm going to look on the spreadsheet for Arsenal Merc or for IO Merc. I need to do this thing, and I'm just going to need to go to the amplifier retuner or whatever they called it, the recalibrator, and pay the money until I recalibrate it to the thing that's in the spreadsheet and be done. So then why even have it if, if everybody's just going to follow the, the spreadsheet? But brighter harvesting results, you throw that in the mix, <laughs> and it's a thing. So... Right, and that sort of throws it out the window. My whole argument. I kind of have it on my list of maybe it's a good idea. Let's, I maybe I will really like it. Maybe it'll be like a little meta game for me to collect the 
amplifiers I want for whatever. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Yeah, so that's an open one. Uh, we can go through this relatively quick because there's going to be a lot more that's going to need to be un unpacked on PvP in the future. But as we mentioned, PvP is going to get bolstered to the highest item level rating. My character here getting killed by pirates. I got knocked out of the game. That's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bolster is going to get... Uh, you're going to get bolstered to the highest item oh, level I did rating. Too. So that's fine. Um, but tactical set bonuses amplify and amplifiers will be your differentiator in PvP. Their idea is um, that you that's the way you're going to be able to, to tune and, and be different. And I would like that to if if in some world that was able to be balanced, which I don't believe it will be. <laughs> but if it <laughs> was, then I like that idea that you could have Right now, if you see a if you see a sork in the game and you know that they're lightning or madness because they're a DPS sork, you know what they're gonna do and you know what their rotation is and you know what they're trying to cast. You know what they're gonna cast next. Whereas you start to throw in extra set bonuses and, and tacticals, and each person has the opportunity to behave a little bit differently and it makes the fights a little bit more dynamic. I like that. Right. Um. Then they also said. So this is where I feel like they're breaking things just a little bit. And then there's this, which I think they're going to have to answer. And there's questions out there on it. Unranked warrant zones cannot earn the highest item rating equipment. So on one hand, they say, play your way. Uh, and on the other hand, they're saying, except if you want the highest item rating. And to me, everybody only wants the highest item rating, guys. I don't care. And this is, I, you saw a little bit this is in the forum discussions on this already there's people who only rp and they still want 258 gear on their rp character so i get it that i don't need it if i'm not doing ranked and not doing uh, master mode operations i get it that it's not necessary if i however i want it and that's the only gear that that's that's my end point so you can say right. play your way but if I can't get, like right now, if I can't get 258 playing my way, then it's not play your way. It's, no, you go do veteran queen or you don't get it, which is what it is right now. I can't get my weapons unless I go do veteran queen or ranked matches. And I'm I'm fine with that, but don't, but real, I guess just realize in your communication that you're, it's not play your way for some of the stuff. Right. And if it's like eye one level, of the guys then in the it's forum the main said... stuff. <laughs> right. One of the guys in the forum said, you know, if I only play the way I play, I'm fine with it taking a lot longer to get that higher gear. Right. For however reason. Right. Um, which like if you if you do play at the highest level, like you're doing uh, you're doing ranked arenas and you're doing uh master mode ops, then you get that gear in direct result of those efforts and you get it before everyone who gets it in other ways and other pathways. Now, if, if unpacked in this, and this is why they, they need to clarify Eric's little spreadsheet, which would, or his flow chart, which we're going to show in just a second. If there is a way to play unranked and then use disassembly and then use the currency and then get a crafter to do a thing and get you, you know, the highest ranked gear, then, Maybe. then this is not true. Then unranked war zones cannot earn the highest item rating equipment. Maybe not directly, but if you can indirectly, then your statement about play your way is true in a roundabout way from a certain point of view. <laughs> right. And maybe that makes it okay. I don't know. This we gotta we we need more answers on this, and we'll pin them down. Um, but that did lead them a little bit into their discussion of acquiring items at 75. And they started out again. They doubled down on play what you want. All content is viable to acquire gear. Again, all gear <laughs> um, or just up to a certain eye level. Drop scale based on your character. I thought this was really cool. So... If, if I'm like right now, if I'm running to 252, then I would start to get be getting 258 drops potentially. And then, which I think is interesting. And oh, what was the statement? How did he say it? Charles said it, which I have said all along some version of this. 
um, basically that R RNG is required. <laughs> there will always be some sort of RNG. RNG yeah. is part of gaming. It's 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 not the it's not the system we deserve. It's the system we need. Right. <laughs> Um, so there and the perfect amount of RNG is is a move is hard to attain. So they're always yes. chasing it. Look up variable reward schedules or the podcast, the version of our podcast where I discuss that in detail. But you put a little thing like RNG protection in, and I didn't when it, when Eric first mentioned this RNG protection, I didn't think he was going this way. But then they clarified further, and RNG protection will be RNG protection, like. If you're not getting a tactical item where tactical items are supposed to be dropping from, they'll start counting how many times you didn't get a tactical item. And then, you know, you'll up your odds of getting a tactical item. That's that's basic RNG protection in a cool in a good way. Right. So you you've experienced Which way... with RNG 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 protection. Yeah. I'm a fan of the RNG protection. It's way it makes RNG way more. I mean, obviously, it has to be set up in a way that's perceivable. That, yeah, I mean, how they scale it or tweak it or make the numbers work is going to affect whether we like it or not. Yeah, but yeah, I'm a fan. So we keep saying RNG, RNG, and somebody even in the chat room said, you know, what is what is RNG? If you haven't sort of seen the MMO design in the past. RNG means random number generator. It's just the idea that the stuff that drops for you in your personal loot, which I think we're going to talk about here in a second, your personal loot or the item dropping off the boss is random. There'll be like a table of possible items that could drop. And then the item that drops is random. And maybe even who gets it then is also random. That's all defined by a random dice roll basically behind the scenes. So RNG is random number generation this determining who gets what. Right. And people think of it as good luck, bad luck. Right. Because random numbers are random numbers. And you could, you know, if you have a one in five, or if you, even if you have a 50, 50 chance of getting an item off of a particular of Garge each time, you should be getting the Garge is cool, tactical off of Garge. And there's a 50, 50 chance. You could be the unlucky person that, that kills Garge 35 times and never gets it, even if it's a 50-50 chance. You fl flip flip a coin, there's a, somebody out of the million people who play will be able to flip that coin and get tails uh, 35 times. That's just the the basics of how, uh, how RNG, how random numbers work. RNG protection says it'll be better, better chance each time, better than 50. It'll be 50, then it'll be 51, and then it'll be 55, and then it'll be 60, and then it'll be 70% chance of getting it. Um, so by right. your, you know, by your, it, usually it never gets to 100, but, you know, by your by your 10th chance, you should get that attack rule. Uh, right, and we as players will probably never understand exactly how they implement RNG protection. Um, but yeah, so it, it kind of people, yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Just see how it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, then they did say the whole thing about Galactic Command being renamed to Galactic Renown, uh, consistent fat, flat leveling, and every rank in every box you open now is a random dice roll to get a piece of gear based on your eye level as personal loot out of that box. So there's no more like, you know, command rank one, two, three, and it's not until you get over to 20 or whatever, 260 or whatever it is now, and or not until you get to 300 that you're getting the 246 gear. It's none of that anymore. Now it's every box you open is a little system on the side to get you some extra stuff. Uh, the other thing was, and we were debating this a little bit, is Renown is now seasonal. So this will be like your command ranks are now seasonal, and it sounds like they're going to be resetting them to zero after every season. Uh, I didn't like that. Uh, Seema, you thought it was okay. I mean, I... So you, I, you explain it, and I'll tell you I, why you're wrong, and then we can go. <laughs> <laughs> Given that the ranks don't mean anything, I felt, why would I care if they reset them? I get your point, though, which is, which is if I earned it, it's never good if they turn that into zero. Right. 
And even if they don't mean anything, I kind of like a long-term prestige system in any game. And if I've been playing for seven years and I'm up to command rank 3000, I'm up to command rank 3000. And maybe it doesn't mean anything except I've been playing for seven years, but that's kind of cool. I, I kind of like that, that ongoing forever prestige type system like that. But yeah, it doesn't mean anything. It won't, you know, if they zero it out, I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll cry for five minutes. But, but that's I mean, okay. I kind of, I've kind of changed my mind. It's sort of like zeroing out stuff never feels good. Like it make it's giving me memories of when they did that, when they removed the TVL achievements briefly. Right, right, right. Maybe they're not going to do that again. I don't think. <laughs> they're like, why are you guys upset? You, it's over. You did it already. Like, oh my god, do you not? Have you met us? Right, right. Don't do that. Yes. <laughs> uh, then they added oh. this idea of deconstruction, which I thought was interesting. So in the same way you can disassemble items sort of in command and it turns into command unassemble components, which you can turn in for stuff, that idea of deconstruction does this a little bit, but it does it everywhere. It's not just uh, things that you're getting in your command stash. Deconstruction is like a special version of reverse engineering. So reverse engineering is still the crafting way to do this. And if you reverse engineer, then you get the Charles points. <laughs> so they have they don't have a name for this new currency yet. Chuck Bucks, Charles points. There's lots of memes going around about what they should be called. But you get the currency and a crafting material if you reverse engineer. And if you deconstruct, you get scrap, which is probably just vendor vendor trash, but you know some some credits and the currency. And then the currency has two kinds of vendors that you can go after um, to, to use that currency then to get items of the appropriate eye level and end game, game items. And this in theory is part of the system that allows you to play your way. So no matter what you do, you can deconstruct things, get chuck bucks and turn them in to get anything you want. So interesting. I wonder, oh, I think even uh, some of the side points was like crafting material of high, high enough level items has, has the potential to net you things like charge matter transubstantiators. I'm not positive, but that would be a good question because then that would really make crafting interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, it's way too risky for me. Like I wouldn't make something in order to deconstruct it in case I got a charge matter transubstantiator. Especially since it probably would be something that took five of them to make it in the first place. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not talking about crafting and then deconstructing. I'm more thinking you run garge, you get a you get a piece a drop piece and you don't need it, but you're running oh, you're yeah. running master mode garge, that you could potentially deconstruct and get a max eye level crafting uh, special material. So I like I like in general anything that makes crafting a free choice. Like if they give any advantage to crafting in operations, then a raider doesn't feel like they have choice. Like they have to go the way that gives the advantage. So this gives people a chance to get mats without being a certain, having a certain crew skill. I'm for it. Right, but it may not. If it's reverse engineering, that is the way the only way you get the crafting material. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's a good well, question. I, mean, then I to thought ask they about said it. I thought they said crafting materials was one of the things you could get. Oh, for if you do it the reverse engineering way, if you do it the deconstruction way, you don't get crafting materials. You get scrap and the and the chuck bucks, the Charles. I ones. thought it was crafting materials and scrap and currency. No. No, it's. Uh, so when they, when they talked through it, it was well. Then never mind. Yeah. So the way the way to get the crafting materials is to do reverse engineering. Yeah, reverse engineering does have advantages. No crafting. I thought the is advantage required. to reverse engineering would be like the the possibility of learning a new schematic, et cetera, et cetera. No, it's crafting okay. materials or scrap, depending on which type you're using. I'm pretty sure, but that's a good point of clarification. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Now, there is, then with the crafting, yeah, you can craft endgame materials, but they still they still hamstring crafting, and they talk about it here, which I, I don't like, which is you can craft max item rating gear, but it's the unmoddable kind, 
and and I don't know what this is fewer amplifiers so it's gonna be nobody's gonna want that so then you can't craft max item rating gear yeah I get that it's got an eye level on it but but that doesn't sound like what I would want to craft but you can I feel like craft it, max item rating mods and enhancements so there's that I feel like in every MMO I've ever played there's this layer of fantasy around crafting that the devs have which is they feel like if they implement something half that's half as good as gear from other sources then that's how they keep crafting relevant and crafting is not even close to relevant when you do that right this so this last it's not thing, just swotar it's every game it's every game except eso um i would say okay well i haven't played eso in fact eso there's some sets with the really interesting kind of set bonuses that we're talking about like yeah like it makes a murder of crows fly around you and do damage to your enemies there's certain sets that are only craftable and if you want that cool set bonus and you can have like two di different sets mixed and match on your character so you have two set two full set bonuses you'll you often wear an, an end game drop set and a crafting set which is nice really cool. um this last bullet though might save it just a little bit is crafted only tactical items so if they put in some of those really cool tactical items that do a really cool thing and the only way you can get that is it's because it's crafted then crafting might matter maybe i just have to say as long as they um unmoddable gear it's not gonna be relevant like i know that they view that as like entry level ops gear but you don't need entry level ops gear so right no you don't um by the and by the time if as you know as you if you level your crafting to the point where you can craft these things in a sort of semi you know pace paced way with your leveling and everything else by the time you can make them your own gear is usually better that's really the right the point where why people say it's not relevant relevant it's it's right yeah yeah i agree so don't 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 bother with this make make this interesting then make this interesting and just go go with that and and maybe yeah. just think about instead of unmoddable maybe thinking about uh uh no item level i can just craft a legacy set of shells with an interesting set bonus on it that would be cool and that you the only way i can yeah. craft that is through uh, get that get that interesting sort of side set bonuses through crafting um yes and that then that led to so you're, you're gathering up these charles points or chuck bucks um there's one main vendor that allows you to to purchase items to fill in specific slots so great this second vendor sounded a little weird but interesting but weird so maybe good maybe bad elusive vendor that appears regularly and has a has a changing selection of specific set items and tacticals I think this is kind of good, maybe good, unless unless we get to a point where it's, no, the only tactical that matters because the way they set it up is, you know, serendipitous assault and focused retribution. And only the elusive vendor has it, and he only shows up with those ones every third time, and you got to go track it down. So I got to wait three weeks to buy the one thing that's the really, the you know, the useful tactical for my Merc in PvP. That would be annoying. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. That I, the part that, that kind of kind of confuses this to me is like if he's if this vendor shows up regularly, don't they mean he shows up irregularly? Because I mean, elusive. That's not very elusive if you know when. Maybe you don't know where. Yeah, maybe they mean shows up often, but not not on a regular schedule and you don't know where and, yeah. and when specifically. Yeah, all, otherwise, yeah, it's not elusive. It's just annoying because it's not there sometimes. I think it it's good if you, if you get, if it's got cool, um, like toys and cosmetic things, but not cool if it's things that you're hunting for to, fill, to finish out your set. Right, yeah, I agree. 
And we'll have to see on that one. And maybe that's a good question to follow up with. Um, we're getting close here. And then they said, yes, you'll now you'll be able to optimize. All gear can be moved via legacy. All amplifiers can be re-rolled, re recalibrated to get what you want. And you can experiment with new play styles based on the items you get. I'm, I'm for all of that, except I still think, especially with PVP, balance is, is going to be a mess. And I don't mind that because mm -hmm. I don't play ranked. Um, and, and when I play unranked, which I still will, you know, every once in a while, it's like playing, playing back in the day when this, you know, when the smash spec was way overpowered and you'd get those, you know, you'd get somebody blowing, blowing the, the DPS off the charts because they were a juggernaut with a smash spec and doing tons and tons of damage. Eh, whatever. You know, then you, everybody yells about, you know, uh, favorite class of the month or whatever flavor of the month and and then you tell them they're bad because they're well the favorite of the month and they they then they said i've been playing this class as long, since launch and, then, <laughs> <laughs> and so whatever that's fine but the people who play ranked it balance really matters to those people as as it should um in an mmo and i my opinion is in an mmo you can never have balance. You can never have perfect balance. You can barely have balance in a in a esport designed game where they tuned it specifically for balance, like StarCraft. You can barely have balance, but in a in an MMO, you can never have balance. Is is my opinion? Right. It's it it's all it's an all changing thing. Like specs change, people change, characters change. It's it's. It's it's not only a moving target. It's just it's like a range that you try to shoot for. Yeah. I think with this amplifiers too. If 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 they implement an amplifier that turns out to be super overpowered in PvP to the extent where everybody has to get that amplifier, I think. And this may be BS, but I think it's going to be way easier for them to fix that amplifier than it would be to fix. A, uh, a player character spec like the smash True. spec yep i think you're right so maybe they can do those fixes in a more timely manner right which they haven't done in the past they balance changes are few and far between so that would be a difference for them if they're going to focus on that if they're going to focus on balance they would need to need to focus on it so yeah, I think they're very ambitious. I give them a lot of credit for that. I think they're yeah. gonna find that they are got a lot of work to do. But you know what? Go for it. Yes, go for it. Uh, Star Saber, the, I want you to post that idea somewhere. You well, you, sorry, Saber just asked, what effect will this have on content like GSF and space missions? My, my, I I have an answer that I, <laughs> which is I want. <laughs> I want tacticals for my ships. Give me a ship. Give me a tactical for my ship. So when my ship explodes, it does damage to all the other ships around it. Every time I hit an asteroid, I I come back to life. <laughs> Whatever the, the case may be. <laughs> that, 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 that's where that should go. That won't go in at 6.0 at launch. I'm sure I bet that's probably not on the table, but that would be cool. Tacticals for ships. Do it. Do it. Uh, and this was, this, so this is start, uh, Eric's flowchart. And when it first put up all the bubbles and didn't fill them in yet, um, I was a little bit afraid. Um, but after he walked <laughs> through it and by the end of the stream, I was like, yes, this is relatively simple. I do get this. This is a good way to look at it. It all starts here at the green circle. Play what you want. On the side, there'll be a little bit of extra stuff coming from Renown and from Conquest. That will feed back into the stuff you're getting from playing. Then whatever you get from playing and from this stuff, you can deconstruct it if it's that if that dropped and that wasn't a thing you wanted. And if you deconstruct it, then you'll be able to go to the Chuck Buck vendors, the Charles Points vendors, and buy some stuff, or maybe use some of the stuff coming out of it for, for crafting, get some things that way. And through both of those and through uh, your re-roll re on your extra extra bits, you'll be able to optimize a little bit. You can play around in here and do a bunch of optimization all you want. 
and then cycle back in to keep playing and, and keep keep going through this little cycle. It's not too bad. So they put de they put deconstruct, you know, in the previous slide, they put it under inventory management. And I don't really see it as any help to inventory management. But we didn't mention the one thing that will be I mean, like an incredible. Oh, right. Right. So, I, yeah, I mean, I guess deleting gear is, is it helps your inventory <laughs> if they're putting it that way. But I can do that now. And I, yeah, my sure problem can. that I have with inventory management <laughs> is not that I can't delete my gear. No. I can. It's what more about problem? the decision making. Yeah, it's like I just hold on to it. So, but so what? What would help you for inventory management? Well, if they had something like a uh, separate storage for crafting materials. Yes, <laughs> that I would help. Agree. And that's what they're doing. And they have it. They haven't and, explained it. Big, big open questions there because this is probably the most important thing that they've talked about so far. <laughs> Will it be unlimited stacks? So if I have. A hundred thousand. They they found that they tracked somebody down with a hundred thousand, a stack of a hundred thousand grade ten mats, and they weren't bots. They got them, however. Um, but if I if have a hundred thousand, will I be able to put that in there and and not fill it up? I want to know. Is there inquiring minds want to know? Yeah, I was looking at my crafting materials today, and I looked in the GTN to see just to see if there's a possibility of selling some of the lower level ones, and I was looking at what's it called superior matrix blah 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 something or other yeah and there was one guy who had um maybe 60 or 70 thousand of them on the gtn right now this afternoon <laughs> of those old bad purple mats from yeah from yeah like, from like 220 yeah. gear so there is a lot of gear out there so my first when i first heard uh, not gear crafting materials out there so when i first heard this i it is in Guild Wars 2. But I don't know, maybe it'll be more because I maybe they know, uh, they they obviously know more than I do about how much people have already or have already acquired. Yeah. Yep. So we'll um, see. But if they make it unlimited, I'm like, I'm going to call shenanigans on them not being able to fix the GTN because they clearly, they clearly have somebody who can do database management if they make it unlimited. <laughs> right. Right. Now they'll have to cap. I mean, so cap it at 60, 64,596 or whatever. Oh, why about, Why did I lose that number? That's an important number. 32,768. They can cap it at that, they can cap it cap at that number of stacks. Cap it at 32,768 of each well, type. Well, yeah, liar. Slot. Yes. Have a slot for a each search. type. Oh, search. A search would be that's the dream. I think that was yeah, the guess at what the, the most dream. important thing was, but no, that hasn't been asked. That hasn't been answered yet. All right, so to to wrap it up, because I guess we went very late, but there's just so much stuff, and it's kind of fun to talk about. Um, uh, that that all of this stuff is going to end up in the PTS in theory. Um, there will be these phases, and they're going to wipe between the phases, and they're going to they roll things out. And the first thing that they're planning on doing is throwing all of this Sork stuff out sometime in June so that we can test it. Now, the follow-up question was, hey, you start doing a class at a time like that, and that's that's gonna, you are not going to get done. June, July, you're not going to get done. But they, yeah. they did clarify it's that. They said, month. we're going to push Sork out because we're trying to work it out, like how it's going to look for a class. And then it sounded like the next one then is going to be all of the rest of the classes. Um, to, yeah, and that's like stamped off I of hope, that model. Um, yeah, so I hope that's how it works out and then the pts rewards comment was there were there used to be titles for getting on the pts and trying stuff out they're going to bring some of those back it sounds like so that's cool i like that uh so yeah ton of ton of stuff discussion continues get there get in there in the forums uh get your feedback in let them know what you think how, how you think the ideas are working out so far and uh and let's make this happen. Let's let's make this onslaught the best best expansion ever <laughs> in the history of Star Wars the Old Republic. Yes. All right. Uh, I think with that, we are ready to pack up here. EBC 295 is ready to jump out an airlock and broadcast this podcast to all of you. And by jump out, uh, we, of course, mean that we are going to push him out gently. <laughs> Keep up with all of us on Twitter at Max the Gray and at AIE SEMA. And if you know any cool people that should be playing with us, 
you can tell them they can come check us out on this podcast or on twitch.tv slash new overlords when we do our live recording or on YouTube, or they can come find our guild website, which is aie-guild.org, where they can find a link to Discord, uh, where on Starforge is our server, and they can get an AIE guild invite there on the Republic or the Imperial side. New people were joining even this week, multiple couple, at least a couple new people joined the guild. Welcome all new members. That is really cool. Um, can't wait to play some games with you. And with that, we will talk to all of you soon. Later, everyone.